She struggled to catch this moving with the food in her mouth. This is a zebrafish larva. It's about four millimeters long, it's about a week old, and it's hungry. And it eats little single cell organisms floating around in the water. Um, and it's really, really good at this. Um, so there is one here, which you might see when it starts moving, and there's a full speed, and the fish is able to catch it. And the fish can do this with only 100,000 neurons. In my PhD, I'm trying to understand how this tiny zebrafish larva and the tiny larval brain is able to do this really, really complicated task. So if we slow this video down a little bit, um, there is a little microorganism there that the fish is going to try to eat. We see that the fish isn't doing this in a single fluid motion, but it's actually doing all these little sub-movements in order to finally capture this bit of prey. And so what I do in my PhD is I try to understand how the fish do this. So if you can imagine taking a camera, putting it over the head of the fish, and following it as it's swimming through the water so the fish's head doesn't really move. And then I can use computer vision to basically reconstruct what the tail is doing in all these little movements that the fish makes. What we see here is that the fish is moving, and I'm then reconstructing these little movements of the tail that the fish is making. And then I can look at tens of thousands of these little movements that the fish make and look for patterns in them. And what I see, or what we can see, is that when they're chasing down prey, there are three types of movements the fish make. The first is what we call a J turn. That's because a fish hooks the tip of its tail like a J and it moves itself around in the water like this. <laughs> The second type of movement we see is what we call an approach spin. So here, the fish just wiggles the tip of his tail a little bit and then it forward in the water. And the third type of movement we see is what we call it a strike. And here, the fish wags its tail as fast as it can and it hurtles through the water towards the prey. But the fish don't just do these things at random, but actually they proceed according to a very specific sequence. So they always start off by doing these little J-turns, but they kind of go After that, they move to doing these small approach spins, and then at the end, they do these big strikes. So we can look at the movements that fish are making, but we also want to know, well, what is the fish seeing as it's making these little movements? So what you can see here is, again, you can imagine taking a camera, putting it over the head of the fish, and that's like the white outline that you see here. There's the fish's head. And all these little purple <laughs> dots are the position of all the different prey um, over many, many different trials that the fish tried to chase down. And so when the fish sees something, what can happen? Something comes into its field of view and it does a J-turn. So the fish moves around and this causes, right, this causes then the position of the prey in the visual scene to move closer to the fish. So now the prey is just in front of the fish, and this then triggers a new movement, which is the approach spin, and this causes then the prey to move even closer to the fish, and now it's right in front of the fish's eyes, it's right there, and the fish does a big strike, and if it's lucky, it catches the prey. So, what have I told you? I've told you that by combining these simple movements together in a sequence, these tiny zebrafish larvae are actually able to solve this pretty complicated task of catching a moving object in the water column. So you're a zebrafish larva, you're going about your everyday business, and something tasty comes into the field of view. You're hungry, <laughs> so you do a J-turn, and then move the prey into, in front of you. It's now in front of you, but too far away, you do an approach swim, and then it's right there, and you do a strike, and if you're lucky, um, you get a tasty meal out of it. So next time you're overwhelmed by complicated tasks, like maybe there are too many lines, what do do with all these lines? <laughs> Try breaking this up into some smaller, simpler tasks 
that you can do in a sequence and remember your lesson from the zebrafish larva that bite size is always better. Thank you.